welcome to the Sunday afternoon Bible study. Let me get rid of uh, Discord here. There we go. Greetings, Mr. Apod. Welcome. Fine music was by Daffy T. Keys. Used by permission. I communicated with him some time ago. I don't even know where it is now. I don't know if I can pull it back, but anyway. Yes. We are here again to study the Bible together. Yeah, let's go ahead and open with prayer. Very good to see you, Mr. Epod. So glad you can make it. And, uh, yeah, let's pray for this Bible study. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I have the blinds open, so there's sunshine coming in. I see. Ooh, we get a puppy here. How old are you now? You're like two years old, aren't you? Anyway. Yes, Jesus is the light of life. That's true. <laughs> he said, search the scriptures. They are they which testify of me. In John 5, 39. When we read in the Bible, we're reading about Jesus. Whether it was events and prophecies leading up to the coming of the Messiah or his life or events and prophecies concerning his return. It all points to Jesus, whether Old Testament or new. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray, God, that you bless this study it uh, here together in your sight we pray Lord for the spirit of wisdom your wisdom and enlightenment to eliminate our hearts and minds we pray God that you protect this time that we have together and we pray for your blessings of peace comfort and healing in Jesus name pray Lord that you help us be sensitive to your spirit to your leading and guiding and may your word find good ground in our hearts to take root to grow and bear fruit in your name Jesus amen all right let's scroll through do 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 We're going to a new slide today. We went over the Ten Commandments. Ha ha! Holy people separated to God. Amen. Whoa, 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 whoa. The hand is twitching. The hand is twitching. Whoa, whoa. How about one click? All right, we'll leave it at that. Yikes. All right, let's, let's not. Let's go one more. There we go. All right. Looks a little more centered there. So. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
<laughs> Pardon me. I'm still... I don't know. I'm not really tired. I guess I... Mm. I feel like I'm still waking up. You know, like... 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 After a long winter and spring is is slow to come about <laughs> ah all right let's see what we got a holy people separated to god to emphasize the reasons why god purposely marks his covenant people a separate lifestyle has always been a mark of distinction among his chosen ones. If you're a believer, that includes you. Throughout the ages, God diligently searched for people who would put him first. And as a sign and a symbol of their devotion to God, he gave them certain expectations, certain things that they should do, uh, observances, and here we, we see a list of them in uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Let's look at that. It says that they are to teach their children to worship one God. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Let's look at that. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand they shall be frontlets between your eyes you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates let's see uh let me see something here i'm gonna open up a new window can we see that uh no, we're not going to open a new window. Never mind. We'll keep the old window. We'll open up a new tab instead. All right. Um, Torah. That's what they call the scroll of the Old Testament, the Jewish Holy Scriptures in the form of a scroll. All right, handwritten on lamb skin, lamb or goat skin. It's also called vellum. All right. Let's see if I can, if it'll show uh, something else. Here they're reading it. Oh, it's in Italy, huh? Cool. So that would be written in Hebrew. Here we go. You can see this picture. See if I can make it bigger. Here he's at the western wall, and here you can see a phylactery tied to his forehead between his eyes, and here 
is another phylactery tied to his arm that's in keeping with what we just read here bind them as a sign to your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes you'll write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates let's see if we can find that as well they they have a uh, name for that which escapes me at the moment We'll see if we could just find it in a random picture. Should be able to. This is where uh, Leonard Nimoy got the Vulcan hand sign from when he was a boy and he'd go to synagogue. This is the, the sign the priest would make. It looks like a Hebrew letter. And they would uh, hold, hold up their hands like that while they uh, pronounce a blessing over the people. I think on the Day of Atonement, here's the frontlets, and here it is bound on his on his arm. I'm not I'm not seeing it on the doorposts. So let me put doorposts here in the search so we can see that that should give us pictures there it is so this is they would uh, put these little scrolls inside a container and then they would tack him tack them onto the doorpost on any door that goes into the house and into any door doorway that uh, leads to a living space. It's called a what? A mezuzah. Let's look at that. Why would they put a mezuzah? Declares the people who dwell here live Jewish, Jewish lives. Remember, God wanted his people to be distinctive from the other nations around them. Uh, to show that they live for God. It's true for, okay. Uh, Jewish household is created by people who live in it by the way they act, the things they do and don't do, the beliefs they hold. To a great extent, a Jewish way of life is a portable faith. You can take it with you anywhere you go. So that's what we just read about in Deuteronomy, the law. He says, you shall teach the laws, the commandments of God. They'll be in your heart. Teach them to your children diligently. Teach them diligently to your children. And talk of them when you sit in your house. When you walk down the street, walk down the way. When you go to the dog park with your dog. When you walk to the bus stop while you're on the bus going to work. While you're in the train. When you lie down, 
When you rise up, you get the meaning. And you'll mark your house and all your living spaces so that people will know that you are dedicated to God. So that your children will know that you are dedicated to God and you expect them to be dedicated to God. And you're to be mindful of God. Even if you're sitting in your house alone or you're with others, you should be mindful of your conversation, that it should reflect your relationship with God. That others can see that you are different, that you serve the one and true and living God. And this started with Abraham. He's called the father of the faithful. The world was walking away from God, neglecting their service. They, they began to cease honoring God. And he wanted a people who were devoted, especially to him. Can you imagine? The grief that entered God's heart when men started making idols and worshiping them instead of their creator. When men chose not to honor God in their hearts but also to dishonor him in their words and deeds that's that's what made Abraham a friend to God is that Abraham believed everything God told him and he was faithful to serve God and follow after God and so God made a promise, made a covenant with Abraham and his descendants, Isaac and Jacob. All right, and God gave his people a land. After he delivered them out of Egypt, he brought them into a land that was centrally located between three of the the major populated continents Israel is God gave his people this land for a reason let's look at where Israel is situated let's look at it okay yeah it's pretty Ooh, that's a really nice picture. I like that one. Because it just doesn't show uh, the mosque, but it also shows the Israeli flag. You know there's religious freedom in Israel. You got Muslims, you got Jews, you got Christians, and you got people of all kinds of different faiths there. Let's look at a map, though. I think map will show me what I want a little better. Here we go. Oh, here we go. All right, see what we got here? We got Africa. You go right past Israel. You got Europe to Africa, right past Israel. Asia going into Africa. Right past Israel. From the Mediterranean. It's right on the Mediterranean Sea. Access to Europe, Africa, and right here. So, the major crossroads. Why did God 
put his people there? Why did he put Israel there? Why? So that mankind could know about God. About the one true God. He put them, he put them there for a reason. He put them there and he blessed them. The Jews have been there since Abraham. Except for that couple hundred years where they ended up in here. In Egypt, and then God delivered them from Egypt, and brought them into the into back into Canaan, the land that He had promised to Abraham. And they've been there since. They've been scattered, and relocated a couple times, but there, God had always had a people, in that place. Since uh, they came out of Egypt. They were uh, reestablished as a nation in, uh, let's see, what year was that? Was it 48? 49? Uh, the state of Israel. Yeah, 48. When uh, uh, the UN, as you know, is uh, rather hostile to the state of Israel, um, but God used the UN to reinstitute uh, officially Israel as a nation. 14 May 1948. Okay. Anyways. Go back. So the tabernacle God established as a place of worship. It was mobile and it moved with the people. They would pack it up and move it anytime God said it's time to move. Exodus 25, 27, 30, 35, 40. Let's look at Exodus. That made them distinctive as well. To be sure. What did I say it was? The Ark of the Testimony. Alright. So here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Here it is. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel. They bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. You see, uh, God, God doesn't need your money <laughs> because he owns everything. The hills are his. The cattle on a thousand hills are his. The earth, the sky, all the gold that's in the ground. Okay, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. We came into this world with nothing. We'll leave this world with nothing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. It's his heir. You see, giving is so that you can participate. Using, using money or resources, or food, or whatever it is that God puts in your hands to bless others, to be a blessing and take part in contributing to the work that he's doing. 
It costs money to print Bibles and get Bible study materials. This wasn't free. The case, the cover, costs something. It costs something for the paper, the ink, the metal that's on here. Hey, Sir Galahard, welcome. Good to see you, man. I hope you're feeling a little better. You sounded pretty, pretty angry with me earlier. <laughs> anyway. You go to church, you flip the switch on, you expect there to be lights. Electricity costs money. You go to the bathroom, you expect there to be water in the toilet when you flush it so that your waste material can leave the room and go down into the sewer system, right? Sewage and water cost money. And you want to wash your hands when you're done, right? That soap costs money. The paper towels cost money. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> the sound equipment cost money. Of course, if you're in a smaller place or you're doing home Bible studies, still, the minister, now we arrive to the subject, yeah. Uh, if, if your minister, pastor or Bible teacher or whatever, if they work, if they work a secular job, that's time away from study and preparation. They have less time to study and prepare to teach and to preach and to reach their community. If, if the minister, the man of God, the teacher, the preacher, whatever, is devoted to full-time ministry, then yes, that costs money. Especially if they have a family support to support. You know? But God wants God wants it to come from a willing heart. A willing heart. God doesn't want you to give to his work grudgingly. God loves a cheerful giver. Not a disgrunt disgruntled giver, you know. So he says that they may bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. He doesn't give the command. You will give me so much you will give me 10 percent or you will give me this you will give me that no he says he wants it willingly god loves a cheerful giver not one who gives because they feel like they have to but i'm i'm happy to uh support god's work support his kingdom support what our church is doing you know he said and this is the offering which you shall take from them gold silver bronze blue purple and scarlet thread fine linen goat's hair ram skins dyed red badger skins acacia wood oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and sweet incense, onyx stones, stones to be set in the ephod and the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you. That is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings just shall you shall make it. And then he gives the particulars 
of how the Ark of the Testimony, you remember Raiders of the Lost Ark, just how it would be look. All right. This is where they would keep the Ten Commandments inside. Uh, Aaron's rod that budded. A pot of manna as it was collected. And the brazen serpent would later go in there. Let's see, do we got a picture? Here it is. Here's the tabernacle. And you see, and God would meet here in this tabernacle with his people as they came to him in worship. There's the altar of sacrifice, the brazen laver where they would wash. Okay. And inside is where the high priest would go. And without the offerings, the priests, they were, they were supposed to minister exclusively on behalf of Israel between God and his people. They were dedicated exclusively to the service and worship of God. And here's what happened. When people stop giving these people to survive and, and to provide for their families would have to go out and become farmers and things like that. It wasn't until the time of David uh, when he was preparing to have the temple built that he uh, divided the priesthood into 24 sections so that they could rotate in teams and come from wherever they were in Israel uh, once a year. So every two weeks, a new team would take over because it was a lot of work. As, as Israel grew and there, was, uh, there were more sacrifices to be made, it had to be very organized. And there were a lot of other things that the priests had to do in service to God. And if they're not, uh, and if they were out there farming and whatever else to support their families, that meant that they weren't available to be of service in the temple. And that happened before. That happened before. That means they're not available to teach the people because they're out there in the fields. Farming's hard work, you know. Raising a family is hard work. Okay, and then you want your your minister to do to to work a job the same as you, to provide and care for and nurture his family like the Bible commands him to do, and then. On top of that, you want them to teach and preach and prepare uh, sermons and Bible studies and organize uh, events and services and lead those things and uh, to keep your church connected with other churches in the area and to minister to individuals and to families. Ministry is as much a full-time job, can be and should be, as anything else. And many ministers, uh, they took the time and, and the money, invested their lives and their fortunes into 
um, educating themselves for this vocation. I went to Bible college. I have uh, a bachelor's and two associates. I spent uh, four years of my life preparing, studying, researching so that I could be equipped to minister to God's people. Time, money, resources. You see? Now there are there are ministers who have taken advantage of God's people and fleeced the flock and uh, have profaned the name of Christ and and really made the ministry look bad and caused uh, lots of people to lose faith, to become jaded, to become discouraged, and to become skeptical. And when you talk about the ministry being supported by uh, tithes and offering of his people, they don't want to hear it because they seen some of these uh, people on TV and in the news who are supposed to be ministers of the gospel, but they're flying around in private jets. Yeah, look, that's not God's way either. You know, having your, your minister in the poorhouse is not the way either. You know, just as we want the man of God to look after the people of God, the people of God should be looking after the man of God. You see how that works? I'm not soliciting. I want you to have an understanding of how this works within your own home church. You know, where you go to church and the offering basket goes around. Give with a cheerful heart, free will, not grudging, not because you have to or you feel obligated to, but to know that there is a greater principle at work. The Bible says, don't muzzle the ox that's treading out the corn. What they would do is they'd get a big millstone. And if you didn't have a water source or a windmill, you hooked up the stone. It was like a wheel. And it would move in a circle around a trough. They would pour the wheat into this trough or corn or whatever it is. Okay. And there was a bar that would come out and they'd hook it to the ox. And while the ox or the mule or whatever it was, was going around and, well, he would eat while he worked. And the law said, don't put a muzzle on him. Let him eat while he's working. And they used that as, as, as a principle, by principle, to remind people that, you know, it looks easy, but, you know, this minister took time and effort and resources to prepare, to study, 
to research and to do all these things and you know how do you like going out and talking before a group of people you prepare something and you stand up there and you talk in front of a bunch of people did you know that is uh, one of the top five fears that people have is talking in front of groups it's a scary thing when God first told Moses go tell them that I sent you he's like yeah but 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 but, 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 but I can't talk I, I'm no good at talking I, I, I mean you know I I'm not I don't have eloquent words and all this stuff he is scared People would rather walk into a room full of snakes and sit in a dentist chair in the dark than to go up and stand in front of a group of people to teach or preach. It's not, it's not as easy as it seems. You think, oh, well, he only works an hour a week. What about the hospital visits? What about the, the, the hours of prayer and study and preparation? Working to organize things, to minister to the body of Christ. There is a lot to it. And if you want a nice church where you can get together and worship God, with your brothers and sisters you need to be willing to help support that um, the upkeep of that building or that room and same with teachers yeah same with teachers whether it's in a public school private school or a uh, community college you know grading papers making tests you know teaching children or young adults a lot of time energy uh, you know a lot of teachers and ministers use their own money to benefit their students or parishioners. I know teachers that go and buy materials for their students comes out of their own pocket because it's not in the school district or the school budget. That's a good point, Sir Galahard. Yeah. Same for Sunday school teachers. You know. Like this, this, this book that I've been using as a guide for the last year is borrowed. The Sunday school material, these textbooks. I got these. Church said they'd reimburse me, but <laughs> I gave him the receipt, but I'm not worried about it. <laughs> so finally, I, you know, the people who are coming to Sunday school, I said, here, this one's yours. <laughs> I said, I'll use this one. I'll use this one. I'll study and use it to prepare. It's part of being separated and distinctive in the service of God. You know? We distinguish ourselves from other religions. You know, religion comes from... Uh, the base word, the base, the root of religion, what does that mean? Bound? Religion. 
definition. Let's let's look at it. The belief in reverence of a supernatural power, power, particular variety of belief, organized system of doctrine, belief, values, okay. Definition and meaning. Uh, what about where it comes from? Uh, definition, types, lists, symbols. Uh, religion, definition, origin. Used to mean only reverence for God or God's careful pondering to find, uh, derived to mean diligence in manner of life, higher unseen power, 1530s related to religion. Come on, we can go back further than that, can't we? Where did I read that? Yeah. Uh, uh, the word religion Derives from, well, here's here's Latin as you mentioned. Philosophy.com. Let's see what we got there. Uh, religiar mean in Latin we'll look at Hebrew after that I hit that thing oh that's table of contents four what's this about Islam To bind or connect. Oh, bind. Bound. Here we go. Ligiar. All right. So, to not be bound, thank you, Shackelford, by your religion, you need to have relationship with God. And, uh, Christian faith and the Judy uh, and Judaism that's based on you know having a relationship with God and uh, the wider community of believers in God all right let's get back on track um, oh Oh, I, I didn't have it on the main menu. I didn't have it on the main screen. I forgot to switch over. My bad. That's actually all the time that we have now. Anyways, God wanted a people that were distinctive in service to him. 
holy people separated to God, to teach their children to worship the one God, and to have a place and support the place and the people uh, where they get together to worship. We'll look more at the priesthood and all that stuff later. Next time. It's already 1 o'clock. So let's go ahead and pray. Amen. Uh, go ahead and put your prayer requests in the chat. We're going to ch pray for uh, Jacob's family. He just tragically lost his uncle. And uh, we'll pray for Burns and Galahard and Shackelford. Anybody else who wants prayer, go ahead. Throw your hat in the ring. Let us know what it is that you need prayer for. We'll pray with you. Pray for you. Whatever it is that you need. Let's keep this Bible study in prayer. So that we can continue to be a blessing to others and reach more people with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had to study your word, to take our time exploring. And uh, we thank you for the peace of your spirit that we feel in this place right now. Let our minds be on you and your word from the time we get up to the time we lay down. Let our minds be on your word and your will on our way to work while we're at work, on our way home from work. When we're at home with our families, that we can be an example of and to the believers and that we would serve you with joy and that while we are bound together with you Lord that we will walk in the freedom and liberty of the spirit the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty Jesus said, learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We pray, Lord, for uh, Shackelford's healing. Let's pray for Trekkie, that you heal Trekkie, Lord, and that you provide for him. We pray for Cheyenne. Yes, Lord. We pray for those who are suffering from that war. We pray, God, that you send your angels to minister help and healing and provision and safety. Continue to protect Cheyenne and her family. Pray, God, that you comfort Sir Galahard and give him peace. Bless Mr. Apod, give him wisdom and discernment. And uh, we pray, God, for his father, that you heal and touch his mind, and that you bless his family. Keep them and protect them and provide for them and give them wisdom and discernment and comfort. Pray, Lord, that you bless this Bible study, that we can continue to reach people with the gospel. Yes, Lord, we pray that you bless and keep lucky, minister to him and his needs. 
help Mr. Apod's dad lose lose some weight in a healthy manner. We pray God for our fellow streamers that need comfort and healing. We pray, Lord, that you send your spirit to them. Send your angels to minister to them. To protect and comfort. Help them to know you and learn of you, Lord. Oh, that's excellent. Thank you, Jesus. Pray, God, for our families. Would you bless them, keep them, protect them, and heal them. Provide their needs. Watch over them and send your angels to minister to them. We're grateful to you, Lord. I ask your blessing upon each person here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, wow. Praise God. Rip car, though? Well, the life is more important than the than the than the machine that he was in. Amen. 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 <sighs> well, praise God. <gasps> Woo! Time to get cleaned up for church. <laughs> God bless everyone. We'll see you next time.